Well, happy Thanksgiving, Trinity, New York. I'm so glad that you have joined us online today. Maybe you're sitting around the living room with your family. You're probably really, really full. Uh, but wherever you are and however you're feeling, we're so glad that you are with us today. I want to say first, I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for our church and so thankful that God has been with us over the last several years, that we're still here. God still has a plan, uh, that the best is ahead. And I wanted to share just a quick little encouragement with you from wherever you are, so that way today you can be reminded of what it means to have true gratitude. And I was reminded of a scripture in 1 Thessalonians. You know it. You've probably read it before. You may have heard me talk about it before, but it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16, and it says this. It says, rejoice always. How many of you rejoiced when your kids slept in this morning? <laughs> rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And as we were preparing for our Thanksgiving meals and we started to get all the food ready and sit down at the table, uh, I was reminded of how for many years, as I was the kid, I was at the kiddie table. Honestly, I only graduated from that a couple years ago when I had kids myself. I come from a really big family. My mom's one of 10, my dad's one of seven. I mean, our kitty table was quite extensive. And I remember it just being wild. I remember being there and with all of my cousins and, and parents getting our food, making sure we ate, making sure we had our manners. We were saying thank you and please. And, and I remember being at the kitty table. And then a couple of years later, when I became an adult, I remember that big moment where I was finally invited to that table. And you see, Something more was required of me when I was at the adult table. When I was a kid and the food was placed before me, of course, I was expected to say thank you, to be polite. But as I got older, I realized that I needed to be a part of the conversation a little bit more. I think some of us in our faith, we're kind of still at the kiddie table with God. It's when God gives us what we need when God puts the food in front of us, that we say, thank you. And we think that's what gratitude looks like, that I have what I need, that I have what's before me. Let me tell you today, that's not what God is talking about when he's talking about gratitude. That's just good manners. And it takes something entirely different to grow out of that and to grow into saying, God, even when I don't see what I hope to see in front of me, I'm still gonna thank you. I'm still gonna trust you. I'm still gonna believe that you are worthy to be praised. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians for a moment. 1 Thessalonians, you see, it's given to the church. And Paul is writing this letter along with Silas and Timothy. And what he knows is that these people who've been following Jesus, they've been through some hard times. Have you been through some hard times? Maybe even right now, your family situation doesn't look how you thought it would. Your Thanksgiving isn't quite what you hoped. You may have lost someone. You might be experiencing a heartbreak. There might be distance, even though you are sitting around that table together. You see, God's people, we, we know that this is a part of life, that this happens. I want you to know today, if that's you, you're not alone. There are people who are experiencing similar things just like you, who don't have all that they need right in front of them, who don't have the fulfillment they're looking for yet are still waiting on the promise. But can I tell you today, God is still faithful. God is still faithful. God knows exactly what you need. He's the one who provides the comfort and the peace to get through the storm you're facing today. You see, these people in the New Testament, they know this. 
and they find that true gratitude actually activates their faith. When they choose to say thank you, when they choose to trust God, when they choose to keep following him and not give up just because they don't see what they're looking for. You see, God, he's not a genie. He doesn't just grant you wishes. No, he's a faithful God. He's a holy God. He's a God who's just, he's merciful, he's gracious. He is so far above anything we could ever imagine. And he knows, our God knows what it's like to live in lack. Our God knows because Jesus himself did it. And Paul, he talks about it actually at the very beginning of this uh, book that he's writing, this letter he's writing in 1 Thessalonians, actually chapter one, he says this, for uh, you became imitators of us and of the Lord and you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And I love this word because it reminds you and I that both can exist at the same time. If you are where you are right now and you are in a season of suffering, can I tell you that joy can coexist with suffering? That God's people knew what it was like to go through times of lack, to go through persecution, but it says here that they welcomed the message of Jesus. See, the message of Jesus is not just for when everything looks good. The message of Jesus is not just when your life is perfectly how you planned. The message of Jesus comes to everyone, wherever they are, whether they have what they need or they don't, whether they're in a season of weeping and mourning or a season of rejoicing. The message of Jesus comes to his people in severe suffering with, the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And I just wanna encourage you today. Maybe you're in suffering. Maybe you're feeling great. Could I tell you that the joy that is given to us by the Holy Spirit, it lasts. It's not fleeting like our feelings. It's something that we can anchor ourselves to. The joy of the Lord is our strength, is an encouragement for us in good times and in bad. Scripture says that Jesus himself, for the joy set before him, endured the cross. Suffering, joy, they live together in this faith walk today. So here's what we know. Following Jesus, it produces a countercultural way of life. It produces a new way of looking at things. And so I want you to know today that God, he's with you. He loves you, that you can give thanks in every circumstance, whether good or bad. If you've lived long enough, you know that things don't stay perfect forever. There will be seasons of suffering, seasons of hardship. So let it be the reminder today that when it comes, that God is with you and that you can still give thanks right then when it happens. And I wanna leave you with this prayer. You see, Paul, he prays a prayer uh, for God's people in, uh, in the New Testament right here, the Thessalonians, the church here. And this is what he says, it's chapter five. And then let me pray it over you. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. What does sanctification mean? It means that God, he's working salvation out in your life. Keep holding on to the truth of Jesus. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. Why don't you hold on to that word today? That the one who called you is faithful. Can anyone right there where you are say, God, you've been faithful to me. You've been faithful and you'll be faithful to bring us through. I declare over you today, your homes, your family members. I declare it over our city and over our church that God is faithful and we're gonna give thanks. 
I love you, church. We're so grateful for you. And we'll see you this Sunday online as well. Happy Thanksgiving.